This is Video Overview Part 2 of 2, taken from an online piano lessons program titled The Chord Voicings Vault. Now in the third drop-down box, there's two sections and they work together. The top section is where you're going to learn to play this voicing. Yes sir, that is exactly what this whole thing's about. Slow, medium, fast, and fastest. And you'll see how this really gets these voicings under your hands. Now this section where it says view print this voicing. Now guess what? I've actually done all this work for you. What you were just looking at was an older version of the Chord Voicings Vault program. In the newest version, I've actually put together a downloadable one-click 350 page ebook so that you can download all of the chords and all of those incredible voicings. The neat thing is, you don't have to print out the entire 350 page book. You can just keep it as a reference. But then, when you really want to get one of these voicings into your musical vocabulary so you can use it in your songs, you can print out the section that shows just that voicing. For instance, here's a three page section that shows just the minor triad with a voicing of the root and the fifth in your left hand, and then the third and the root up on top in your right hand. And then as you scroll down the page, you'll see that this voicing is shown in every key. But they don't just go up note by note. They show up in a particular order on the page, something called the circle of fourths or the circle of fifths. If you're around music, you'll start hearing that phrase a lot. In fact, we'll dig into it here in just a minute. But for now, let's say that you printed out just those three pages that show the voicing that you really want to zero in on. And you put those three pages up on your keyboard or up on your piano. And then in the Chord Voicings Vault, you'd go to the third drop-down box and you'd say, okay, I'm ready to practice. And you'd choose, oh, just for fun, let's choose the fastest. Here's what would happen. One, two, three, four. You can just follow the chart, right? And you can hit the loop button. See how it lights up there? So now it's going to loop. Meanwhile, you're playing along on your own keyboard or piano and getting your hands used to playing this voicing. One more and it will loop. There it goes. Okay, just for fun, let's grab an advanced chord now. We're going to use that old minor 6-9 that I said was one of my favorites. Let's try it with a medium speed. One, two, three, A little Latin percussion four. going on. And you'll notice it's a little slower than the fastest. And it does the same thing, goes all the way through the circle of fourths, every key. Let's see what this voicing sounds like at a fast tempo. One, two, three, four. Two, three, right, four. Now you're cooking. Got a little shuffle going on. Now you understand how this program works. And you may be saying, okay, what is the circle of fourths? You may have heard of the circle of fifths if you're a musician or if you've been around musicians. It's an old term. It's, a, it's simply a way to go through all of the keys in a musical way. Let me take a look at a graphic here. In fact, I've got it on the screen here. Look at that. Kind of a UFO looking thing. And it says the circle of fifths and it has a little arrow going to the right or clockwise and a circle of fourths and it goes counterclockwise. Just really quickly, I want to show you the difference between the circle of fifths and fourths. Let's go around to the right, starting on the key of C. If you go up five notes in the scale of C, that's really important. You go up five notes, you end up on G. Then if you go up five notes in the scale of G, you end up on D. So forth and so forth, right? Keep going around the circle. Each time you get to a new letter, You've got to go up five notes, like let's say I got to E flat and I went up five notes in the scale of E flat, I would end up on B flat. And if I went up five notes there, I'd end up on F and then I'd end up on C. Now, one of the great mysteries in life, especially to a musician, is how you can go up five notes and end up at C, but you can also go up four notes and go the other way and still end up on C. Isn't that amazing? So if, now yeah, just to just to be really obvious here, if you start on C, go up four notes in the scale of C, you end up on F. If you go up four notes in the scale of F, you end up on B flat. Okay, and you keep doing that, you go all the way around, you end up back at C. 
Now, the reason I go by the circle of fourths in this program, it's really simple. If you take an average of all the different changes between chords in songs or lead sheets or chord charts, you'll find the number one most common change between chords is up a fourth, like C to F or F to B flat. C to G is common, right? Up a fifth or G to D, that's pretty common, but up a fourth is the most common change between chords in all of music, at least Western music. So what I like to do is go ahead and utilize that. We'll go around in this program using the circle of fourths, especially when we play with the drums. One, two, three, four, right? So we're going to go up a fourth now to B flat. Now before we wrap this thing up, it's real important. What if you don't know how to go up four notes in the scale of D? or four notes in the scale of G. Let's say you start on C, and you say, I want to go up four notes in the scale of C. Well, that's real easy. You get to F. But what if you go up four notes from F in the scale of F? If I went here, <laughs> I'd be wrong. It sounds wrong, doesn't it? It has to be this. Why? Why is there a black note in the first four notes of F and there's not in the first four notes of C? The reason is there's a pattern to every scale. A real common approach to a lot of teaching down through the years, and it's, it's a valid approach, it's just not the one that I found has worked real well for me or people like me. A real common approach is to give students lists and lists of scales. And the teacher will say, okay, memorize all those scales and come back next week. And usually the musician doesn't show up because, you know, they've been pulling their hair out trying to memorize all those scales. If, on the other hand, you memorize the pattern that all those scales and chords are based on, then you'll understand how to build them anywhere on the keyboard. This is what we go through in the first 20 minutes of the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. You can find that online at playpianotoday.com. So if you look at this and you think, yeah, I can kind of understand the concept of how that'll make me a better musician, but maybe it's even a little over my head, maybe you need to go through the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. That will teach you to understand the foundations of music and then learn to put all these chords together in something called Called rhythmic patterns, which then teaches you how to play any song on the piano or the keyboard by ear, completely free from the need to use sheet music of any kind. It's a great fit. It all fits together like a puzzle. This program, the Chord Voicings Vault, is the next step. Let me show you just a couple more things, and then we're going to call it a day, and I'm going to let you print out a bunch of charts, put them on your piano, and fire up the drums. One thing to watch for as you got this program is up here, updates. Um, this is I, I strongly, strongly believe in this program um, because I've been living it all these years and, and I've been wanting to put together something like this and now it, it seems to work real well and the Lord has blessed me with the ability to get this together for you. So check for updates to this program as you've got it. You just click that little button, uh, the drop down there, and uh, you can always check. One of the next things I'm going to do is add more voicings. You know, we're going to add rootless voicings. We're going to add all kinds of stuff. So this thing will always be, you know, Lord willing, it'll always be growing and getting bigger and uh, more tools for your toolbox. Now here's something I should have shown you right at the beginning, um, but this is going to be a reward for those of you that stuck through the video and <laughs> listened to me all the way. Uh, this says fifths and octaves. And uh, it's not really a chord. I guess a fifth is technically a chord. Two notes or more is a chord. Um, fifths and octaves. This is simply for practice for you, learning to go around the circle of fourths. For instance, here's what I mean. Uh, let's choose a chord voicing. Chord voicing of one, one, and one, or three roots. Look at this. Real simple. In fact, you can practice with the drums. You can start nice and slow. One, two, three. So your hands start understanding what it's like to go up a fourth and make it all the way back to C. Or you can choose the fifths, one five, one five. Sounds like uh, Caesar just walked out of Rome. Ah, all hail the piano teacher. Let's say you've been practicing a while and you hit fastest. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah. These are power chords, nice and fat. Okay, at this point, that's what this program is about. 
it's not real hard to understand, but there is so much depth there. I would encourage you to take this thing and work with it every day because I'm not kidding you. Like 90% of the piano players out there who say they play by ear never get into voicings. They simply play chords. For instance, they'll play a minor triad and they'll play it like this, right? Or they'll play it like this. Ah, heaven forbid. But not you. You're going to play something big and fat like this. So there it is, the Chord Voicings Vault. Watch for updates. I'm excited about this. I'd like to get your input on it. Um, I think this is going to be a great tool for you. So this is David Sprunger from PlayPianoToday.com. Thanks for watching.